Thank you for giving me this opportunity to introduce myself. My name is Manosei Echampon. I hold a bachelor's degree in geological engineering from the University of Mines and Technology in Ghana. Some of the relevant courses I pursued as a geological engineering student was petroleum geology, exploration geology, physical and structural geology, hydrogeology, and groundwater geochemistry. I was actively involved in numerous research leadership and volunteer roles. One example of the research that I performed was a research into small-scale mining. The research won the 2017 Osayen Takwa Scholarship. I have more than two years working experience in geological applications within the mining industry. Currently, I'm a gate control geologist. My role as a gate control geologist is leading and supervising a 20-member team and also mapping geological outcrops. Proud to this position, I worked and liaised with the Environmental and City Department in monitoring water quality in and around operation, operational areas, mining operational areas. In our studies, we noticed that as mining progresses, the parent rock is being exposed to, or the fresh rock is being exposed to atmospheric oxygen. And the atmospheric oxygen has the ability to react with all forming mass, leading to the formation of iron oxide, all forming minerals such as pyrite and acino pyrite, leading to the formation of all forming minerals. Sorry, iron oxide. The iron oxide has the ability to contaminate groundwater and surface water, a phenomenon called acid mine drainage. We try to mitigate mitigate this acid mine drainage phenomenon by suggesting controls to the mining team and the entire sample company. These exposures has helped me build my foundation as a geological engineer and as a geologist. I hope to continuously contribute to geological studies to research and service and contribute effectively to any anything I work with in the near future. Thank you. Welcome to today's welcome to today's class of Geology 101, where we look into work cycle. Before we start our class, I would like us to recap into our previous class where we talked about the course content of Geology 101, uh, grading system, uh, geology work about, and expect expectation from you as a student. In today's class, we'll be talking about the formation of rock, the various types of rock, and brief description of the rock types. Now, before we do that, let's talk about geology. Geology comes from two key words, geo and logi. Geo means earth, and logi means knowledge. So, the study of earth is what we call geology. And who does that? As they are scientists. Why are we doing? Why are we studying the earth? Because the earth is our home. It holds all the things that we love: our family, our friends, the automobiles, the technology that we use everything in it. So it is essential to study the earth and unravel things that hazards and things that may affect our lives and also help in mineral exploitation as well. How does geology do that? Look at the solid, the liquid and issue state of the earth. And one solid thing that we look into is rocks. When you go to see Lancaster and you pick a rock, realize that it may have a different texture. And let's say when you travel to Bedford and you pick another rock, it may have a different texture. And why there's a variation in the texture, our class will help us understand the difference. So about rock cycle. Rock cycle is a process in which different types of rocks are being formed. Okay, so uh, we realize I just mentioned different types of rock, meaning there are different types of rock. So we have three main types of rock. We have the sedimentary rock, we have the igneous rock, then we have the metamorphic rock. So I want to take a critical look at this image. Sorry, I want to take a critical look at this image. We'll come back to it in the near future. So before we talk about the various types of rock, let's take a critical look at the earth. We have the crust being the solid matter which we sit upon. Then just beneath the crust is the mantle, which is made up of 
molten rock or what you would normally refer to as magma then beneath the the mantle is the core now just going down temperature increases so within the matter the mantle or uh, the magma is quite hot and the core which is made up of the electric components is much hotter we talk about igneous rock which is the first rock that we want to look at rock the igneous rock is actually formed from um, volcanic eruption so at a point in time magma tries to find its way through the crust onto the earth's surface and when that happens we say there's a volcanic eruption when it happens the volcanic eruption the magma that comes out after out of the volcanic eruptions cools down solidify and crystallizes leading to the formation of igneous rock so we may view igneous rock as a fire formation so the word ignorance comes from the word uh, from a Greek word called ignai, meaning fire. So ignorance rock, whenever you hear ignorance rock, just think of fire rock. Depending on the position at which a rock, the ignorance rock may form, we may have an intrusive ignorance rock and an intrusive ignorance, ignorance rock. Intrusive ignorance rock are mainly formed within the earth crust. Extrusive are formed outside the earth crust. And the difference between them is intrusive rocks, intrusive igneous rock have um, porphyritic textures, intrusive igneous rock have phenocrastic textures. Another type of rock that you want to look into is the sedimentary rock, which is made up of sediments. So, a time when igneous rocks are formed, sediments, a uh, weathering process act on it, sediments are being formed, the sediments are being transported, they are hosted within a basin. Accumulation of caves, uh, barrier of caves, uh, compaction of caves, leading to a layered kind of rock called sedimentary rocks. Now, depending on the material which leads to the formation of sedimentary rock, we have a detrital sedimentary rock, which is made up of many sediments chemical and organic rock. Chemical is formed from minerals, organic is formed from organic materials. So, example is Bedford and Shale. So a bedford shield and black hand sandstone. Black hand sandstone is quite common in Lancaster. Bedford shield is common in Bedford. Then we have the MS limestone, which has the, the composition of both chemical and organic segments. So this rock actually was studied by one of our seniors and it's quite it's an, an interesting research to read about. We have metamorphic rock. Metamorphic is formed from two keywords, meta and morphic, and morph. Meta means change, and morph is form, so change form rock. So basically, when, depending on the type of material, uh, the parent material, you may have two types of metamorphic rock, the meta sedimentary rock, then the meta volcanic rock. Metamorphic rock is formed as a result of heat and pressure changes. So if you can see, there is this, Features of metamorphic rock, which are quite unique. Do not be bothered about it. We look into it in our petrology class. So we come back to this image. Remember, I talked about the magma. So within a magma chamber, at the point in time it tries to erupt, then it cools down, crystallization sets in, then leading to the formation of igneous rocks. When igneous rocks forms, the time we have erosion setting in leading to the sedimentation process, then sedimentary rocks are formed. Then metamorphic and metamorphism sets in, leading to the formation of metamorphic rock. Then finally, at a point in time, when the metamorphic rock is close to the magma chamber, it melts some portion of the rock, gets into the magma, there's a volume increase, then eruption starts occurring again. Then we have ignorance rock forming. So you can just view the rock cycle process as a continuous process which happen within a period of time. At a point in time, you can have the ignorance rock changing to metamorphic rock. So basically, that's all about the rock cycle. Remember, the rock cycle do not happen over a night. It happens for a period of time, a longer period of time, to be specific. This is over 1 billion or 1.5 billion um, years, which is quite long. So basically, that's all about the rock cycle. Any question? If there is any question, you can let the class know. We discuss about it. If there are no questions, you can. Um, if 
perhaps you have a question that you may prefer to reach out to me in private my email is available you can reach out to me via email we schedule a zoom meeting then talk about it over zoom if there are no questions then um, thank you for having me thank you for hosting me thank you and uh, see you in the next class Thank you.